our God is great. And our God is mighty. Our God is ever watching over us. And our God is our shield. And the heavens will declare his glory and so will we. On this earth. Jesus said, pray after this manner, our Father which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. A name above all names. There's none other name given under heaven whereby men can be saved. A name that is above all names. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. And it surely is. It surely is. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth, in earth, in this earth, this earth. The first man was in the earth, earthy. The last man was the Lord from heaven. And I am earthy tonight. So his will will be done in earth Amen. as it is in heaven. It surely is, is in heaven. Praise God. Amen. Oh, thank you, Lord, tonight because we feel the greatness of our God. We feel the, the, the lifting, trusting, forceful power, the dynamic power yes. of the Holy Ghost, yes. the Holy Spirit, thunderous in its glory, yes. mighty in its power. Yes. It has such power it can raise the dead. It has such power it can heal the leper. It has such power it can heal cancer. It has such power it can forgive the prostitute, the lesbian, the homosexual. It can forgive the man that is in the lowest pits of sin. The power of God. After that the Holy Ghost, Acts 1, verse 8. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Come upon you. I will be done in earth. Yes. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, you shall receive and you do receive power. And if that hasn't happened to you, the Holy Ghost has not come upon you. Simple as that. Two and two makes four. If, if that doesn't happen to you, if you don't receive power outside of yourself, I'm not talking about muscular power. I'm not talking about mental power, although they're included in it. I'm talking about inward grace, inward power. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall receive power. And every Christian that's ever received the Holy Spirit in their life knows what I'm talking about. There is an unseen presence when you sit at the table to eat. There's a protecting force when you get in your car to drive. There is a God above you when disease tries to fasten upon your body. There is a glory about you in the midnight hour. Praise God. There is a deliverance upon you when everything is going adverse, when everything is going wrong, when everything is going the wrong way. But there's a hand that reaches down for you. That's what it's about. I feel tonight that we ought to honor this God that has chosen and his son and the Holy Spirit and has chosen to come in this place. We have no program here. We have nothing that we have. We said at five o'clock, stage one, stage two. We had no performers in here rehearsing before this meeting began. 
we are depending on the Holy Spirit to lift our lips open, to bring inside of our depressed minds and drive it away if it be there, to cause us to lift our hands, to cause us to say Jesus is out of the tomb and is alive. approaching 21 now into 21 that word has gone out from Jerusalem he is not there he is arisen why seek you the living among the dead you know your life is wrong if you're going to dead issues and dead places and dead things and you're going to dead people and you're in the land of the dead uh, the Bible said, he that wandereth out of the way, the book of Proverbs, one of Solomon's Proverbs, yes. he that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Yes. I don't want to live in the tombs. I have been delivered from the tombs. Yes. I am alive tonight. Yes. My Lord is alive. Yes. I'm in my right mind. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Praise our God. I believe this congregation is destined tonight for greatness because I serve a great God. I am not destined for a dead end street in a city somewhere, a dead end alley. I've lost the days when I even thought I would ever wind up a bum on life's highway. But the King has called me. The King has spoken to me. Praise God. And more than that, I'm a child. The king tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I wear his royal robes. I, am, I have his royal blood. I've been transformed by his uh, power. Uh, I am not one of life's ordinary, obscure, wandering, nameless, homeless people. I have a home. I'm going to be there one day. Destined for me, a mansion, by the way. Praise God. Not a shack by the river. Jesus never said, I have prepared for you a shack by the river. He said, if let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house. What would you expect in his Father's house? A shack by the way? No, there's a mansion there. Praise the name of the Lord. In my Father's house. I, I prepared, I have many mansions. And so tonight, this congregation is bound for a great meeting. Already the Holy Spirit is flowing like honey in the rock here. And you can feel uh, the, 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 the lifting presence. Uh, if you're a cripple tonight, you'll surely walk before this meeting is over. Praise our God. If you came here blind, you will leave seeing. If you came here lame, you will leave leaping. Praise God. This is not an ordinary church service. In fact, I wouldn't give you two cents for a church member or a church service. Uh, I have been delivered from ecclesiastical bondage many years ago. I am not seeking to build a mega church, a little church, a big church. I am the church. You are the church. Praise our God. We are the church. We are the body of Christ. We are the church of the living God. We are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Praise our God. And tonight, I want the Holy Spirit to touch every one of you and let you feel. You know, the church really needs to, and I, I wish I could get this over. I can't, but God can. Um, if the church could stop thinking like ordinary people and feeling like ordinary people. If you could do that, oh, Brother Marlowe, I do that every day. No, you don't. No, you don't. Uh, that's why the church is still on the ground and not lifted any higher than it can be. Uh, you see, if, uh, Jesus said, if I be lifted up, 
Yes. Well, if I'm with him and he's with me, if he's going airborne, so am I. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. I said, if he's in me and I'm with him, and if he's lifted up, I'm not going to be on the ground and him up higher. I'm going higher. Yes. If you then be risen. Yes. Isn't that what Paul said yes. in Colossians, the third chapter, yes. chapter verse 1? Yes. If you then be risen. See, if, if, if people could get out of this ordinary thinking and got their bodies be stimulated, their minds be stimulated, uh, at, at 6 o'clock begin to think about getting to church, getting in your place, not missing unless it's absolutely necessary. That afternoon, start preparing. Brush your teeth early if you can. Put on a little perfume early if you can. Praise our God. Amen. After shave, whatever. Uh, get your tie so that don't run in, grab a tie, grab a, you know, unless you have to. Start thinking like Christians think. You're going to be with the house of God. Don't let anybody call you, interfere with you. Tell you not to come. You're the children of the king. If, if, if the people of God, if the church could start thinking differently, they treat the church like it's a cheap thing. It's an optional thing. I can take it or leave it. If I feel good, I will. If I don't feel good, I won't. Uh, if I feel good, I'll worship. If I don't feel good, I won't worship. Uh, you gotta prime me like a pitcher pot. Throw some water in the old-fashioned pitcher pot. Prime me. And then I'll say praise the Lord. And uh, prime me some more. Then I'll say glory. Prime me some more. Then I'll shout. Prime me some more. Then I'll get happy. Praise the name of the Lord. You old pitcher pumps. How many remember the old pitcher pump? Pour some water down. Boom, 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 boom. boom. I, I, I have one out on Mendoza Road out here when I was a boy and slept in the barn out there. Uh, we had an old-fashioned pitcher pump. I could pour the water in, boom, 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 trying to get water up to the top. But this is not a pitcher pump. Amen. He opened up a cistern, a well. Out of your belly shall flow rivers. Yeah. For the tempest talk, for those that are 
for thou, if you don't have love for your sister and your brother, I mean, not put on love, not treated as love, not put on, you put on. If you don't love your sister and your brother, get that stuff out of you, call it human being. Well, I'm Irish and that's the way I am. I'm Dutch and that's the way I am. I'm Spanish and that's the way I am. I'm English and that's the way I am. I don't care what you were. There was a Jesus that came. And you are a new creation. And if any man be in Christ, he is not Spanish, he is not English, he is not Dutch, he is not German. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. He's not black, he's not white, he's not poor, he's not rich. You are a new creation. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Let the power of God call on you tonight. Jesus wants love in his church. And bless God if we have to take a bamboozled twist of the gospel and we have to use a flamethrower on the pillboxes of people's little pillboxes they've got in the church. We're going to blast them out. We're going to pray them out. We're going to love them out. But you cannot sit around and look at your brother and have an evil eye or an evil spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. You cannot harbor grudges. You cannot harbor past mistakes. You cannot look at people and say, I remember when they were. But well, God remembers when you were. But you're not that person tonight. You're a new person. You're a new creature. You've been baptized. You've been sanctified. You've been set apart. The Holy Ghost is here. The Holy Ghost is in you. to do for the mightiest revival we've ever seen. I'm not talking about the balloons and smokes and the strobe lights and, and all the stuff that they've got now to build what we call the mega church with and the donuts and the free turkeys and the free hams and the pound of hamburger they'll give away if you show up there or whatever. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the greatest revival that we've ever seen. All we need is the church to rededicate itself and to give themselves back to God and turn their lives back to God and pray through to the Holy Ghost and then be a hell Messiah. Be a born again church full of the Holy Ghost loving me, loving you, loving each other, not afraid to say hello. people to fill yes. these chairs. Yes. That's all we need. Talk to, to use your talent God gave you. Yes. Use it to I, I played the trumpet when I was a boy. I played in the band. Played in this band. Um, the many, many, I don't know, I don't know how many years ago. I was in, back in the late 40s. I know that. I played in this band. Played a trumpet. I played when the power of God was falling in this church. Right here. Yeah. Only it wasn't this building, it was the building across the street. And I played until blood came through my lips on the mouthpiece, playing that trumpet over and over again while people were receiving the Holy Ghost and the power of the Spirit was falling. And I took the trumpet, took an angel, wiped away the blood, I played on. Praise our God. Because the glory of God. Amen. You, you know, we will not get his blood in us as it should be, filling us, thrilling us, until we're willing. Thank you, Lord. We're willing to do whatever he tells us to do. It's amazing, right? Someone say it with me. It's amazing. Say it again. One night, that amazing grace can take Don Norman. Sit back. I keep saying that, don't I? I wonder how many going to be here the night that he leaps up from that chair and he's no longer blind, but he sees. Brother Marley, you're pot dreaming. If I'm pot dreaming, they were pot dreaming 2,000 years ago. If that isn't going to happen, then the apostles put it on and faked it. There was not a man at the gate called Beautiful that wrote.
rose up and walked. Blind Bartimaeus didn't see. If I'm thinking that, but I believe with all my heart, when people get dedicated again to God, we're going to see the blind see and the lame walk and the lepers heal. It happened 2,000 years ago, it'll happen now. All he wants is the people to fall in love with him, give their life to him. You know, I'm not going to get into it. I may get into it tomorrow. Some, I'm, I'm praying over it. There were four feasts in Israel, and they were all very important. And all four of them, I could speak on somewhat on them tonight. And um, they, they, they were feasts to not be ignored. Uh, the church has now come to the fourth feast in type, in shadow. I'll give you the chapter to read. You may want to read it tonight. When you go home, chapter 12, Exodus 12, uh, the 12th chapter of Exodus, the Passover, and the 23rd chapter of Leviticus includes all four feasts there, starting with the fourth verse, going on down to the 26th verse, I believe it is, of Leviticus 23. And, um, and then tie that in, I may talk on this some tomorrow, if God would will, I don't know, uh, but, but then tie that in with Second Chronicles, the third chapter, through the seventh chapter, and, and, the, and the instructions given Solomon to build a house that David could not build That's it. Come on. because his hands are too bloody. That's it. And as you know, there are some religious people, they have slaughtered enough people, they have misjudged enough people, they have been judgmental, they have had uh, Pharisee spirits, Sadducee spirits, uh, until their hands are too bloody right now to build the house of God. Hmm. God's looking for a, Solomon means peace. God's looking for people of peace. Yes. The prince of peace. Yes. Isn't fighting their brother. Isn't trying to outshine their brother. Yes. Isn't trying to build a million dollar cathedral and he can only build a half a million or, or whatever. We're not in a race with anybody. We're not in a numbers game with anybody. We're not competing with anybody. We're not jealous of anybody. We're not envious of anybody. No, Praise the name of the Lord. God is looking for someone to kill the old man. The old nature, the first Adam, and live an overcoming life. Amen. Not in word and in tongue, but in deed and truth. Praise the name of the Lord. To be overcomers on this earth. He's looking for somebody jostling for a position, envious because they don't have it, wanting to vaunt themselves beyond their brother, their sister. He's looking for people that are broken, humble. Amen. That will, if necessary, will uh, sweep the floor, wipe the dishes, uh, wait in the dining room, carry out the garbage, yeah. sweep the floor, vacuum, uh, yeah. uh, love people, yes. uh, forgive people, yes. uh, be kind to people. Yeah. Man, that's what we have to, you know, you, you can't, even when people, uh, they're not able to even be among us. I've got an example here earlier before service tonight. One of our brethren here, we're going to pray for Brother Dennis. Yes. He came among us. Yes. He missed now, been missing a good while. But he showed up tonight in the back of the church here. Wasn't any in condition to sit here and be among us. Uh, he needed a place to, uh, something to eat. He needed a place to sleep. He needed to go get a shower, a bath. Um, I, I, I came in and with the brethren around me here, we counseled him, talked to him, prayed with him, leveled him out from that condition that drugs move you into. Uh, another world, but I didn't let him go like that no. because a child of God never stops seeing how kind they can be, how good they can be to those that are not in their right mind, their right place, their right state of mind. Come on. So I took him down and I set him down to a three-piece Kentucky Fried dinner. Yeah. I said, Dennis, eat something. Get to feeling better. Then from here, I've already, we've got you a place down here at the Army, Salvation Army. Go take a shower. Get you, I, I don't have room here. I'm, so, I'm filled up here. I've got 60 some odd people on these grounds. I have no place to uh, put anybody else right now. And uh, I said, but I'm not going to turn you out in the streets. I said, uh, here, go, uh, go get you a shower. Get you a, uh, get you a, a room. Uh, stay tonight. Be back at the service tomorrow afternoon. And we'll sit down together and we'll pray. And if you're in your right mind, your right frame of mind, 
And I, 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 he wasn't when he first come in here, was he? But when he left here, when he got down there, he was able, I noticed he was eating that chicken real well. <laughs> I noticed he was uh, ready to, he said, I'll go, uh, I'll get a bath, I'll, I'll get cleaned up. See, what I'm using this example for is you can never just push somebody off and say, I don't want to take time. I don't want to help you. And to the last minute you can help somebody. You're indebted of Christ yes, sir. to never walk away from one point of salvation that you can help somebody with. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Did you get what I said? Amen. 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 It may not please the neighbors. It may not please society. But we're not here to please anybody but Jesus Christ. I want him to really know I love him tonight. I want him to know that I love his people. I love humanity. I love the family of God. Praise God. You study those, those, those feasts. There's four of them. Three of them have already taken place. One of them we're now facing. The Passover is the first feast. I, I said I wouldn't do it or not because it would get too lengthy and, and I don't want to undo what God has already done. But those feasts are very important. They were important to Israel. They're important to us. The Feast of Weeks, the Feast of Pentecost, uh, the Feast of the Trumpets, the Feast of the First Fruit, the Feast uh, of the uh, End of the Harvest. Uh, they, they're very important. And we're in the last feast of the last days, the Feast of the Trumpets. We're here. And if you can hear the trumpet sounding, you'll assemble yourself for the last great feast before the coming of Jesus. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. I'm so blessed. I'm a Gentile. Saved by grace, I'm now a Hebrew. Praise God. I now have the covenant of Abraham. Bless the name of the Lord. And I, I'm so blessed that God didn't leave me out. The last feast I'm invited to. Will I go to the world? Will I miss the feast? Will it not be at the time he says, come and dine? Children, come and dine? Praise the name of the Lord. I want to be there. I want to be there. Praise God. Let's give him a praise. Hallelujah. back into that. Yeah. We'll get back into that. It's very important. 23rd chapter of Leviticus. <laughs> Everything in that Bible is type, has an antitype, has a picture to be fulfilled. Everything in the old covenant has a picture to be fulfilled in the new. And we've got, we've got to see that, study that. And then the building of the house of God. Yeah. Solomon said, I am determined to build the house of the Lord at Mount Moriah in Jerusalem that my father could not build. I believe Jesus, who is an antitype of Solomon as he is of David, the Prince of Peace, will build the house of God in these last days. Praise God. Fashion it and form it and shape it and we'll dedicate it. The Feast of Weeks, or the Feast, that is the Feast of Trumpets. May God bless you. All right, let me make everybody, I want you to know that I love you. And I especially am thrilled tonight uh, to have uh, with, with us, um, Brother Matthew has been working, laboring with the uh, Rich Assembly and Palmetto. They meet at 10 o'clock uh, on uh, Sunday morning while the bilingual service is meeting here at 10.30. And we come there down at Port Charlotte at 10, and then we're here at 2 uh, on Sundays. We have a busy day on Sundays here. But uh, I, I'm really, really, really blessed to have this precious man of God and his wife. I met them the first time last week uh, at the uh, work on Saturday, the backpack um, work. Uh, and I'm, I want Apostle Gonzalez and his dear 
precious wife to stand up back there. Uh, this is Apostle Gonzalez. Uh, Gonzalez. They live in Palmetto, I believe. Is that right? And he has a ministry of technology, of audio ministry. Uh, very. I won't describe it because I'm not as familiar with it as I need to. But he does a great work over there, and he's also proprietor of a business. But only, and then he also is working for Christ, and he has willingly opened his heart to Brother Matthew. And uh, Brother Matthew has gone in and reached hundreds and thousands of people using his technology that he affords. Uh, he can, uh, at any given time that we want to, this church wants to, he can put us on television itself. Uh, he's acquainted with that, has the technology over there for that. Um, I appreciate the audio, the technology. I appreciate Brother Cruiser here Amen. in this assembly for the work he has done over weeks, months, conscientiously, long hours, labor, and not all of it pleasant at times uh, because it never is when you do God's work.